Hello everyone and welcome. I'm Alex, I'm the architect for back 4 app and this is our very first live on YouTube showing a little bit about parse queries all the way from the basics to the advanced queries. So thank you all for joining. I'm really excited to show this and as I said this is our very first uh, time doing a live on YouTube so I hope it goes well. I have created an application here and I have a few classes. This is the database diagram I created uh, for showing a few uh, query examples today and I shamelessly ripped this from a website about uh, re relational data. This is uh, a dog breed and dog breeder uh, database with a few classes. So we have dog, which is our main class. Inside dog will have a name, a description, a size for the dog, which is a pointer, so we can relate sizes to dogs. Also a breed for a dog, which is also a pointer, so we have breed. And we have the breeders and uh, Connecting that, we have the breeders that breed uh, specific breeds, and we also have a RFID number which is unique for a dog. Uh, you don't have to to save all these. I'll, I'll let all this material for you to download on the description of the video after this this live session. Also, I will have the backups for my classes here so you can download uh, and try the examples yourselves. So, uh, as I used this for a, a article in our blog uh, a few time ago, and a few people asked why I'm using a size class that will hold only two values here, uh, three actually, uh, small, medium and large, and why I didn't use a, a string uh, for for the dog's size here instead. Uh, the reason why I did this is because, as I said, I ripped this from a website which had a uh, MySQL database and in MySQL we have a enum type that allows you to specify uh, values for that, uh, that uh, property so you can only pick a, a value that is in the enum and uh, on MongoDB does not support that so as I wanted the sizes to be specifically small, medium and large I decided to create a pointer and then I can link uh, each dog to its size and it must be one of the sizes that you find here also I have tags for the dogs and here are the breeds and on the breeds I can see the breeders uh, which is also a relation to, to the breeders that breeds this is specifically breeds and I have a few abilities of each breed and here I have two breeders that I chose myself Alex and Alison he, he's here with me he is our CMO and I got a few geolocations so we can query on geolocations as well. So, going to code, I have my Atom editor here and I have my console there. So, if I type ls, you'll see I already have my node modules folder because I installed the parse framework using uh, npm. It's as easy as typing npm install parse and letting it run, you'll get this node modules folder and a package lock.json which will specify uh, the packages which are inside so there are, there are the packages that are inside that and I created this index.js file right here which is the file that we will be using so uh, this is a, a live that will show a few queries, so I'm not focusing on how to, to install and how to instantiate. We have uh, YouTube videos here on our channel that shows you how to do that. And at any point, if you have any questions, please let 
them on the the chat here. Uh, we'll try to answer if we can during the live. If we cannot, then we can uh, let them them answer after uh, the, with our support team. All right. So uh, it seems to be working uh, right now. So first thing to do is we have to instantiate parse. I'm going to do that by typing const and parse equals require parse slash node because I'm using node.js and I, I myself like to use the latest version of parse so I'm going to check if I'm using that I go here to server settings and core settings. You see I have my parse version as 3.4 here. We actually published a new version is 3.6 on this week, but 3.4 will do for us today. So back to the code. I, I like to use async methods, which is only supported on parse 3.4 and, and above. So in order to do that, I'm going to type async function and give it a name. So I'm going to call it run. Oops. And then we'll type run calling that function. There we go. Now if I put some code in here, it should uh, run correctly. So console.log and initializing. Now here if I type node index.js you see I have the initializing printed in there so it's working and now we can start setting up stuff. First thing I have to do is uh, create initialize parse. Uh, I instantiated the framework here so I'm going to type parse.initialize and this uh, method receives two parameters or three parameters. I have to pass the app ID and also my JavaScript key and last but not least because I'm using some functions that will need to, um, to use the master key uh, I will pass the master key. If you do not use those functions, you cannot. You do not need to pass the master key as well. So back to Chrome and server settings. Go to core settings. I'll get my app ID from here and paste it on the first. And I'll need my JavaScript key as well which I'm going to paste here and last but not least my master key remember as I said you only need the master key if you're going to use methods that asks for the master key uh, I'm going to use some on this presentation if you're not using those uh, don't pass your master key all right so uh, after setting my initialization of parse I have to set my parse server URL as you know, parse is a open source tool, so you should point the URL to the parse hosting which you're using. That could be back for app or perhaps a, a, another company or perhaps you're running it uh, in your own server, so you should set that uh, accordingly. So parse dot server URL equals and the server URL we should retrieve from here. There we go. And now we are ready to go. So, as I said, we're going to start from the very basics and go all the way to advanced. Uh, the first thing I'd like to show you is how to retrieve all dogs without any filters so we can see how it behaves. So, I'm going to write a quick uh, query in order to find all dogs without any filters, all right? So, we do that by typing let all dogs query equals new parse dot query and we specify the class name that we're looking for in this case we're looking for dogs so back to the code dogs 
Now, uh, when I run a query uh, with a find method without any parameters, what I'm going to retrieve is an array of parse objects. So I should uh, declare that ar array as well. So let array results equals, and then I can uh, call my find method using the query I just created. So await, because this is a asynchronous call, and all dogs query dot find. Now inside my array results, I will have all the dogs that this query will output. And I have now to uh, loop through the, those results and see uh, the data that I was able to retrieve. So for let i equal zero, i is more than uh, array results dot length i plus plus. This will loop through the array and I'm going to print a few results. So uh, console dot log and we're going to type my array index i and I, I must retrieve the properties of that parse object. We do that using the get method and then passing the property name I want. In this case let's get the name of the dog and I'm going to copy this and let's print a tab and let's get the dog's price as well and another tab oops and then we can get some other information about the dogs let's get the uh, age of the dog, right? Now, if I did this correctly, we should now clear the console. And if I type node index.js, we will see I have these dogs Maxine, Jake, Buster, Bingo, Fido, and Susie uh, with their corresponding prices and their ages. We can check that here on the, the parse dashboard. Here are the prices and here are the ages. I have six dogs here and six dogs there. So it seems all right. Well, that was our most basic query we can make in a parse object. But sometimes uh, you, you will bring some results and you don't need all the information for those results. So let's say I only needed the name and the price of a dog. But as you probably saw here, I'm bringing all the information for all the dogs. So in there, I'm bringing also the description, the pointers for size, the pointers for breed, the pointers for tag number, and the is male uh, property as well, uh, with all the other properties for a dog. Uh, that is uh, good because now you have all the information that you can possibly need in that array, but that has a, uh, uh, a bad side, which is you're bringing a lot of data that you are not going to use. And Parse provides a tool for you to uh, specify exactly the, the properties that you, you are going to use, and that is, uh, brings a smaller payload for you. So let's say I will only use the name and the price of the dog. I don't need any other information for my application. Uh, and uh, th so there is no point for me to bring all that information since I'm not going to use it. So that method is called select. And then I can pass an array uh, of the properties I'm looking for. And parse will only bring that for me. So, as you saw here, I'm bringing uh, the age uh, and all the other data for all the dogs. If I come up here, oops, what just happened? There you go. <laughs> if I come up here and I get my 
all dogs query and I call the method dot select and inside the select I pass a uh, a string telling which are the, the properties I'm going to retrieve then uh, parse will only retrieve those uh, those properties and my payload will be much smaller which means my application will run faster I will use less memory on my devices and I will consume less data plans of my devices because there are less information uh, being sent so as I said I'm going to bring only the name and the price for the dog so name and price if I save this I'm, I'm letting the age here for, just for you to see what will happen okay if I come back here and type clear this node index.js you see I brought all the names and all the prices but an undefined age so my payload now is much smaller than it was before uh, I'm saving a, a data plan I'm saving memory I'm making faster requests so this is the first uh, method we will learn today is the select and you should select only information that you are going to need so for instance let's say you have an application where you have a list and that list will detail more information about those dogs so uh, if I print the name of the dogs and then when I click the name I, I will need the price and let's say the age uh, it's better for me to make a query that only brings the names and when I click that name it will bring me the price and age for only that specific dog because uh, it will be uh, a smaller payload querying for just one dog's price and age if I had a, a full call of all dogs and all the information for all dogs and then store that in my device that's not really a good idea because uh, you, you actually make just one request but then you, you hold on a, a lot of data that you won't use it anymore so it's better to make multiple calls to the API bringing only the information that you need at each call instead of making just one big request with lots of data that you will not be using later alright so now that you're that you have uh, a few, a few uh, dogs printed here we can start specifying a little bit more I have a, a few notes here of what I wanted to show you I'm going to uh, go one by one and then we can proceed so uh, now my next uh, objective here is to retrieve the name and the price for a specific dog so let's say I have the six dogs here and I want to get the, the uh, name and price only for bingo uh, then we can use our next method which is equal to so we can come here and call all dogs query dot equal to and this will receive two parameters the first one is the name of the parameter I'm inquiring for in this case I'm going to look for bingo which is the dog's name so name and then I can pass the value for bingo which is bingo now if I clean my console and type node the index.js you see it only brought the results for bingo this uh, can be done uh, it, with any properties that you have for bingo you don't have to specifically uh, uh, retrieve the, the property that you are querying for equal to but you do need to uh, specify the correct uh, data type so if I'm let's say if I'm querying for age and let's try to get an age here like I have a few dogs with age 6 as you can see then I have to pass 6 as a number because age is a number there and I should have two dogs now there we go I have Maxine and Buster which are 6 years old but as you can see I'm not retrieving that 6 years old information I'm just using it for queries so you do not necessarily need to use the information that you're going to query for alright so 
What if we wanted to retrieve the size of a dog? Let's see what happens if I try to get the size as well. Size here, and since I'm going to use this information, I have to specify on my select or it won't be brought. So, index.js. Look what I have. I have the name, as specified here, and the price, but the object itself is not uh, what I, I was expecting it to be. I wanted to get a, a size uh, of the dog as a string. As you remember from our class, we have uh, sizes as uh, small, medium, and large, and that's what we wanted to, to retrieve. If we come here to API console, in our REST console and type classes slash dogs and then we type send query you'll see it will retrieve my dogs here and as you can see my size is actually a pointer to the uh, sizes class with an object ID inside and all this is a uh, JSON object so this is why I have my object there so, just in order for us to know exactly what's happening, let's get all this in json.stringfy and see what it will print. There you go. Now I have my object ID and my uh, property and my object ID value in there, but this is still not the application, the information that I want. So, how do I retrieve the sizes value of the sizes object? Well, we know we have a sizes class, oops, on the index manager. And inside sizes, we have the size property. So, since I'm getting the size from the dog, and we know sizes on JSON object, what I can do is get the property size of that size. So, get size. And what we will have now is, oops, this should be working, but it didn't work. Perhaps I. Let me see why it's not working. Undefined. And I'm bringing the size. This is the problems with the when we we make lives. Uh, sometimes we find a few. Oh, of course, because uh, I'm getting the size there, but I have to tell parse to include this information because, as you remember, if I control Z this, JSON stringify, I only have my object ID. So the next method that we will uh, learn is the include method. Include will tell parse, include the information for these objects in my uh, result. So I'm bringing the size as well, and I have to tell parse to dot include and pass which is the, the property that I'm looking for, in this case, size. Size, it's there. And I can remove the JSON string file in dot get size. There we go. Now it should work. Now you can see I have my size value in there. So this is a way of making uh, relational queries inside parse. As you see, I have a relation between dogs and sizes, which is a pointer. Uh, if I click here, you will see the size of the specific dog. And in here, I have a proper size that I'm retrieving by using... Oops, didn't want to do that. That I am retrieving by using the include method. Uh, I can do that to bring uh, information about all the, the uh, relational data that I have for a class. And always remembering I should get the value of the retrieved object, in this case, uh, getting the uh, retrieved object with a get as well. All right. So, uh, what if I want to make uh, 
a few a few adjustments to my query and set uh, values above or under or equal uh, a certain value so I'm going to retrieve uh, to remove this uh, equal to 6 and I'm going to run this again so I should have all the dogs again there you go and as you can see I have the dogs price here uh, parse supports uh, a few methods for specifying ranges in values. The first one we're going to see is the equal to that uh, we already saw for the name, but in this case we're going to use for the price. So if I get all dogs query dot equal to, and as you saw earlier, get that price and get, let's say, Maxine's price, which is 180. And if I run this, I will retrieve only Maxine because it's specifying this price value must be equal to 180. But we do have uh, a few other methods for us to use. The next one we're going to use is greater than. And I'm looking now for all the prices that are greater than 180. So it should bring me, in this case, Bingo, Fido, and Suzy. All right? And there you go, Bingo, Fido, and Suzy, because all these values for price are over or greater than 180. If I, had, if I wanted to uh, include uh, or Maxine, uh, we have the greater than or equal to and in this case it should retrieve Maxine as well because we have uh, the price of 480 which is equal to 180 we can also uh, use the less than In, in this case, uh, if I'm using 180, I'm going to retrieve on, on uh, Jake and Buster, which are 100 and 150. There you go. And uh, just as we did before, uh, we have the or equal to. And now Maxine is included in that query as well. So uh, this is how you filter ranges for all those dogs. Uh, next, we're going to see how to uh, encadiate different, uh, different methods to uh, specify better the, the, the query that I want to do, especially using the end uh, word. So in this case, let's say I'm looking for all the dogs that are priced uh, under 180, under or equal, so I'm going to let this here, so less than or equal to, and in this case I will also look for dogs that are uh, true to Ismail. So, so all dogs query dot equal to and the is male is the property and have a value of true in this case we will have just Jake and Buster as you saw uh, Maxine is a female so she should be false here where is Maxine there we go it's this one so it's false so when you are making a query with an AND, A and D, uh, you can just encadiate as many methods as you want. Uh, it will just keep appending for that query uh, and retrieving the results that matches both. Just having a sip of my coffee here. And, all right, so let me clear this. It's a little... It's getting a little messy. Now, uh, what I want to do now is, uh, I also have a property here for the dogs with their breed. And if I go to the breed of the dog, 
I can see they relate to breeders and they have a few abilities. But I'm actually going to leave this uh, for further on the presentation because this is more advanced. Let me get a few other other uh, methods that, that I can show you first. Uh, one method which is really good, uh, let me go back to my code, it's here, is let's remove this so I can get more uh, dogs. Actually remove this as well. I type node index.js, I should retrieve all the dogs again. So sometimes you have to sort uh, the, your results. So let's sort this array of results based on the price. Uh, if I want to sort, sort this, I can do it like that. I can put a all dogs query dot descending and then pass the property that I'm looking for to sort in this case is price and if I get that you see I have my now my most expensive dog on the top and my least expensive dog on the bottom we can also do it with ascending and now I should have my cheapest dog on the top and last and uh, most expensive dog on the bottom and since we're talking about uh, um, sorting we can also limit the number of results that we are going to retrieve so imagine you have a paging situation where you want a, just a few results to show in a page uh, you can use that that by adding the method limit so we can put all dogs query dot limit and then specifying the number of dogs that you want so let's get the first three ones Jake, Buster and Maxine so just three and if I node index.js you see only the first three ones and now on the next page you want the other three dogs which are Bingo, Fido and Susie and for that you could use the skip method skip will uh, ignore the first uh, results of a query uh, by the number that you are going to to put here so in this case I retrieved the first the three first ones and uh, Jake, Buster and Maxim so now I'm going to skip those three and get, retrieve Bingo, Fido and Susie And there you go, you have now Bingo, Fido and Suzy. This is very useful again for, for paging situations where you want to show a few results in one page, on the next page, show the next uh, few ones. All right, let's see what else I have here to show you. Um, let's bring a, a few more informations uh, from another classes using uh, the include methods as well. So I'm going to include here the tag for a specific dog. So I have the tag number there. Uh, the property is called tags, right? Here, what is tag number is the name? And I also have to include that information because I'm going to be interested in the values inside that and down here we're going to get all this and paste it again so now I'm retrieving the tag number from the dog and inside tag we have also the name tag number and this should retrieve the tag numbers for all dogs as well so as I said before and I'm showing you uh, you can include data from different classes and it doesn't matter the number of classes that you have uh, you just have to remember to include the information of uh, that class along uh, in your query and retrieve it with a in another get method so you can read the property inside it if you remove this include here I'm just going to comment it you'll see I don't have a specific uh, data 
to show because it wasn't included on the query itself, right? So there you go, let me see what else I have uh, here to show you. Um, good. So now that we saw how to query for um, pointers uh, using the include, we will see how to um, retrieve a few more informations, especially for the 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 oh, I forgot the word. I'm sorry for the relations that we have. So let's remove a little bit of this query. Just let the array in there, and let's make a little different. I need to type. Here my query, so we can do better and should be all right. Let's say I want to see which breeders uh, can breed the breed Pincher, right? So I have breeders here, oops, there. So I have Alison and Alex and we have breeds. So I have Pincher there. Uh, let's see which breeders can breed a Pincher. In this case, both breeders can retrieve I can breed a uh, pincher. So let's make a query in order to do that. The first uh, thing I have to do is I'll have to query my breeds class so I can uh, know because uh, here in breeds I have the relation to breeders. If the relation was in breeder, then I would have to query the breeder, right? So here in breeders, in breeds, I'm going to query for the breeder, but first I'll have to make my query dot equal to and pass the breed that I'm looking for, pincher. I hope I typed that correctly. And let's get uh, the very first result for that. So let pincher dog equals my query await because this is a synchronous call dot uh, another method we can use is first different from find first will return only one object if it finds one or no if it doesn't so as I'm looking for pincher and I'm, I know that there is only one pincher in my database, I can use first instead. And now that I have my pincher dog in here, we can create a relation for the breeders. So in order to do that, we're going to type let relation equals pincher dog dot relation to there is it. Oops, breeds. My relation is named breeders, so breeders. There we go. Now I have the relation for that uh, dog, and now I have to query on that relation so I know which are the breeders that breeds pincher. So we're going to type a new query for that. So let uh, breeders query equals relation dot query. This will tell parse that uh, I'm going to query on that relation. And then we need a uh, array in order to retrieve all those values because we're going to use find. So let array results equals await relation bring this query dot find and now on my result I should have the uh, the breeders that I'm looking for in this case I'm going to type to print the name and the address for that those so array results get the name and array results get the address and everything else can be thrown away. So if I type not index.js, you see I have Alison and Alex who lives in Yosemite Avenue and Middlefield Road. 
based on the that both breeds pinchers. So if I change pinchers for some other breeds that only has one uh, breeder, let's say uh, German Shepherd here, which only Allison breeds. So there you go. It will bring me only Allison. So this is how you retrieve information about uh, relations in parse instead of pointers, right? So if you have a many-to-many a -many relation, you can use something like that. Just let me get another sip of my coffee. And let me see what else we're going to show you. Now let's say I want to query the breeders for the dogs and check uh, which are the breeds that every uh, breeder breeds. So I'm going to delete all this and we're going to type let breeders query equals new parse query oops, and specify the class breeder which is the class that we are going to query for. There you go. And then we will have to get all the breeders that we have. So let array results equals await breeders query dot find. Now, if I only run this, I'll get only the breeder's information, correct? There you go. But this is one of the few cases that you have to type two distinct queries so you can uh, retrieve information of another class completely disconnected from this one. So, since I'm, I'm printing the breeders here, now I should uh, query for all the breeds that that breeder uh, is breeding. So, inside my for loop, because I'm going to run it for every single reader, I'm going to create a new query. So, let uh, the, this reader reads query equals new parse dot query dot oops. And then I'm going to specify the query I'm looking for, in this case, reads. There we go. And then I can start uh, querying the breeds for the uh, actual breeders. So this breeds query dot equal to. And here inside breeds, I know the the property that he, uh, holds my breeder ID is breeders. So breeders uh, lowercase breeders. And then I must pass a value to that. So the value I'm going to pass is my array results index i, which is the reader that I'm looking at this moment. And for that, I'm going to create a new result set. Let's let breeds array equals this breeds query dot find and that will also be an array, so I'll have to loop through that in order to uh, recreate, to retrieve the information. So I'm going to change the index here, j, and reads array right there, j here as well. And for every single one of the breeds that I have, I am going to print a tab. and the breeds array name, so get the name of the breed that every single breeder has. So if I type not index.js, oops, missing an argument. Where is it? Line 80. No, it shouldn't be 18. Oh, it's right here. I missed the first, the last one. So, no index.js. 
and that didn't work because I didn't put an await here. As you probably remember, I said this is an asynchronous call. Oops, await. And if I just uh, call it without an await, it will uh, print empty because the server did not respond to the, that request yet. Now there you go, and I didn't get a name correctly. Why didn't I, didn't I get the should get the bridge actually, right? I think it's bridge in the name. Oh, there you go. Now I have my pug and my dash sound, but this is still not the way I wanted because I'm using index i there. This is the problem with copying and pasting, we sometimes forget stuff. And there you go. I know that Alex breeds Pug, Poodle, the Shounded Pincher, and Alison uh, has German Shepherd, the Shound, and Pincher as well. All right. So now that we have uh, all the breeders and the dogs information, we can get a little bit more advanced. And let me see what else I have here to show you. Mm. Oh, this one is, is nice. Let me remove all this. Uh, I should move it from here. Console log and all this for. There you go. Let's say you want to use a uh, retrieve all the distinct values of uh, of a property. So uh, we have a method called distinct that will retrieve all the uh, distinct values for a, a specific uh, property. So let's say you have uh, a few values that, that are the same for, for uh, a property and you only want to get uh, one uh, occurrence of every value that you have. So in this case we're going to create a query and use the distinct method to get those distinct values. So let distinct query equals new parse query and let's add a new dog here called Buster again but this Buster will be priced uh, this one is 150 let's call it 200 and Let's give it 10 years old, and this buster is what? This buster is a male, so this is will be a female. And that should do. Oops. So back to my code. We're going to query the dogs. And we are going to create our array for results equals await because this is a synchronous call distinct query dot the method is called distinct and then we pass in here the property that we're going to be distincting from so in this case it's name and now i also have to loop through that result so for let i equal zero i smaller than result array dot length I plus plus and now I can console log uh, name and add my result array index i dot get name to clear this mm, this should be good to go so oops something is not a function why is the why is it not a function? Did I type it wrong? Result array get is not a function. Oh, uh, yeah, right. Uh, I should not use the get in here because since I'm, t I'm specifying on the distinct that I'm looking for the distinct names, I don't have to uh, retrieve the uh, name with a get. It will already be retrieved. So I'll just 
Here it is in the index.js. And there you go. We have Maxine, Jake, Buster, Bingo, Fido, Susie. And as we have a duplicate Buster, uh, we only have one occurrence of Buster in there. So if you have uh, two distinct values inside a query, this is how you do it. And let me see what else I have here to show you. I should have a or situation in here somewhere, so let me clear this and let's make a or query. Sometimes you want to uh, retrieve results that uh, match one part of the query or other parts of the query. Uh, in, SQL, in the SQL world we have the or uh, word that would, could uh, do that. In parse it's quite quite a bit the same but the structure to calling a OR function is a little bit different. So let's say I want to retrieve the names and prices for all dogs with uh, can fetch uh, as you probably remember here on the uh, breeds we have the fetch uh, ability it should be here fetch and uh, they have a specific price that should be lower, let's say 180. So back to the code, we can delete this and then let's start coding. The way we do a OR uh, query in parse is we, mount, we have to build two distinct queries, uh, each one for one part of the OR that we are mounting and then we uh, get everything together with the OR. Uh, so let's make our first query. So let dogs who can fetch query equals new parse query and this information is inside my uh, breeds class, so breeds and I'm going to uh, find how the dogs can fetch. As you can see, is an array. Uh, you can use equal to and all the other methods uh, for selecting data uh, inside arrays as well. So if I just come here and type dogs who can fetch query dot equal to, and I tell I want the abilities and I want the ability to fetch. And if I just run this, this is just for showing how it works, so let result equals dogs who can fetch query, await dot find and uh, for let i equals zero, i is smaller than that's result dot length plus console log and we're going to get the result index i dot and call the breed get breed so let's save this and note index.js so I know that poodles, dachshunds and german shepherds are the the uh, breeds that can fetch. So I have here Poodle who can fetch, Dachshund who can fetch, and German Shepherd who can fetch, the other two cannot fetch. All right, so I'm going to comment all this because we're not going to use it right now. And oops. let's make our second query. Uh, let's say we wanted the, the dogs who can sit, for instance. I know this two can sit, oh, actually three can sit. So let dogs who can sit query equals, and then we can copy all this. And the ability is to sit. And let's uncomment this. And this should do. Let's see, I should have two dogs here. Oops, I don't. Why, why don't I? 
Oh, because I do have Poodle, Pug, and German Shepherd who can sit, right? So, sit, sit, and sit. Oh, there you go. That is why I have the three dogs. Uh, so, I want to get a dogs who can both uh, fetch or who can sit. In order to do that, we do it like this. Let dogs who can sit or fetch query. By the way, I like to, to use uh, long variables names like that, but you don't have to if you don't. <laughs> Equals uh, parse dot query dot or and then I'll pass the two queries that I'm looking for. So dog can sit and dog who can fetch. And um, now I can start going deeper. So if we get dogs who can sit or can query, can fetch and type node index.js, you see I have a conjunction of both arrays but they are not duplicated, so Puddle only shows once even being on both queries. Alright, so what if uh, I want to add the prices of those dogs as a, as a parameter for this query? So now that I have all these dogs in here, I can make something like this. Let me remove this. Let uh, oh, interesting. Let me just go back a few. Let uh, sit fetch query equals parse. Oops, new parse dot query in dots and we're going to tell we want this query to match the results that this query uh, was having so sit fetch query dot matches query and then we're going to get the breed of those dogs and we will get this query. So for this query, we will also match the results that this query is retrieving. All right. And let's create a new query with the price. So let under oops, under fifty hundred fifty query equals new parse query you also be querying dogs uh, and we will tell this query here is uh, less than or equal to and we're going to look for the price which is less than or equal to 150, all right? Um, and that should do the trick. So now if I get all this, uh, we can actually match the first query as well. So under 150 matches query and then we can put our seat fetch query in there uh, this will be for the breed I think I'm doing this um, on real time so I'm not really sure this is going to work so uh, let's see what we have let oops for let i equal zero, i is smaller than this dot length i plus plus. 
So let's print the fifty query dot get and we will be retrieving the um, name of the dogs. Let's see how that goes. Oh, it didn't bring any. Uh, why wouldn't it bring any dogs? So if I have all these, perhaps I'm looking to a too small value. Let's get dogs under 300, perhaps it gets better. No dogs at all. So perhaps I'm forgetting to include some information. Let me just try to retrieve this and see if it works. Oops. So oh I didn't use the find right so <laughs> it's not going to find anything. So uh, let result equals await find and here we're going to use the result on the query and this should result dot get is yes, result index i this should do the trick all right now i have my dogs in there and if i remove this let's see if we get any no i still don't have any dogs but um, let me see how how can i make this more interesting and also works so i'm getting the dogs who can sit and who can fetch and we know this is working because we already done so i'm going to comment this and let's make sure we are uh, retrieving those correctly and define it why am I getting undefined since I'm going to choose breed? Oh, it's because I already have breed. Uh, I probably should have included the the breed here as well inside dogs. I have the breed, so in this case here, I'm going to include breed. Perhaps this will work. And there you go, now we have the breeds of the dogs and probably the name will work as well. No. What if I call it like this? No, still no dogs. So let me review all this. So I do have here my uh, or query and I'm going to rewrite all this into here so let's let dogs can sit fetch query equal oops new parse query on dogs and we will get this to match matches query we're going to get the breed and we're going to get this query here so actually the naming of this is not really good because this is not dogs who can reach breed these are breeds to correct this so you just have the correct names so we don't get confused by so so now I'm going to look for the breeds who can fetch our query and now I have the dogs who can fetch our query and uh, let's see how it goes mm, what? dogs who can fetch query where did I, where did I buy that is undefined on line 13. Ah, oh, it's breeds here as well. So. 
There we go. Now I have the Briggs who can sit, fetch, the Briggs who can sit, and then I have the Briggs who can sit or fetch, because I use the R here. And I have the dogs who can sit and fetch, which is all the dogs, which the breed uh, matches the square root here, so now this should work. Okay, so Maxine, Jake, Buster, Bingo, and Fido can uh, bring or fetch, can sit or fetch, all right. So now that I have this square here, I can start uh, adding a few more uh, parameters to it. So dot uh, less than or equal to and tell the price is 150. And now this should work. Now there we go. Uh, we have Jake and Buster whose price, where is Jake and Buster, Jake is here, and Buster is, uh, here is this Buster, which are less than or equal to 250, we know it's not this Buster because this one is, called, is priced over uh, 150, and according to that, I sh these dogs should uh, sit and fetch both, so if you go to the breed for this dog, it can fetch but cannot sit, and if we go for Jake, it can sit but cannot fetch. So there you go, now it's working. So let's make this a little bit more interesting and this is actually the last example I'm going to show you guys. What if I want to uh, have a query uh, with an OR for breeds to sit and fetch but I also want a, a or for uh, a price. So what I want to have, and as I'm going to type this so you can better understand, I want a breeds that can sit or fetch and I, oops, it should be in a comment would be easier to read, right? And I also want the dog, uh, dogs that cost under 150 or over, let's say 300. Sounds good, right? So, uh, I also have my uh, queries for seat or fetch here. I have the seat here. Let me open a new space there. So, dots uh, breeds that can fetch. And here I have the breeds that can seat. And Using this or here, I have the breeds that can sit or fetch, all right? So let's make the same for uh, the dogs. So let's change the name for this. So let's call it dogs under 150. And we can remove this. So dogs uh, that are under 150 and let's make a another query that makes the dogs that retrieves the dogs that are over 300 so let dogs over 300 equals new parse query dogs oops and dogs over 300, we're going to get that greater than or equal to price 300. And now I have to do the same as we did here with the or for the dogs. So let dogs under 150 or over 300 query, just because I like longer names. 
So parse query or and I have my 150 query and my over 300 query and this should do but as you probably uh, noticed right now I have two OR queries and I want a AND query unifying the results for those two queries so how do we do that? we're going to create a new query so let main query equals parse dot query dot end and inside this end we're going to pass those two queries that we have with an R so read so you can see to our fetch put a comma and dogs under 150 or over 300 and the result for this query will be retrieved uh, with an await but now I have to include on my main query the data that I want to be retrieved so main query dot include and I'm going to include the breed that I'm, I'm bringing from dogs and let's select the values that I want so main query dot select and I'm going to get the name of the dog and the price and last but not least the breed of that dog and here we will run our main query in our result and then we can print the information that we just retrieved so I'm going to retrieve the result one more plus here the name and we're going to get the price and we are going to get the breed all right seems correct to me let's hope it works and let's see oops something is wrong does this query is not defined it probably forgot forgot it somewhere find there you go mm. oh copying and pasting it again all right now it should work something wrong with oh, of course it must be for the same class mm, interesting so I'm querying oh that's correct because I'm actually querying on the breeds here not on the dogs and in order to use an end I must query on the same query so let's create a new query up here uh, I must retrieve the dogs who can sit or fetch so let dogs who can sit or fetch query equals a uh, new parse query and this one is going to be for dogs right and I'll have to tell that this query will match this query up here so dogs who can sit or fetch query dot matches query and I'm going to get the breeds and this should match the results that we find in this query here and this one we're going to put down here and let's see if it works and didn't work for the same class where did I go wrong All right, it's for dogs. This one is for dogs, and this one is also for dogs. In which class that is happening? Let me see. See fetch query. Let me get this 
he written perhaps um, I have some some better understanding so let's call it fetch query and oops fetch query and call this uh, six query and here we're going to call sit sit fetch query I'm going to get fetch query and the sit query as well and dogs can sit or fetch we're going to query in dogs and we're going to match this query on breed and sit fetch query in here all right this seems correct now we're going to get dogs which the price is under and dogs over 300 okay mm. call it dogs under or over and just to be sure this is correct and dogs under or over will be here and or dogs who can sit or fetch is there the main query will include the breed and select name price and breed okay now it seems to be correct let's see and there you go but it didn't retrieve me the breed why it did not retrieve me the breed uh, because it's an object so i have to get and inside the breed we have the breed as well so breed there we go there you go now we have jake buster and fido who are priced under 150 or equal right because uh, less than or equal 150 or greater than or equal to 300 so fido which can uh, fetch or sit so if i have the pugs let's see, let's go to dogs and see jake for instance jake is here its breed can sit only and buster on the other hand let's see buster here uh, the, its breed can fetch but not sit and fido if i go back to dogs and Fido is here, its breed can both sit and fetch. And there you go, so this is quite an advanced query, as you can see, uh, we brought different values from different classes and, and different data types and ranges uh, and got our final result. So uh, this is everything that I had to show you for today. I hope you liked this, uh, this uh, live webcast. Uh, we will provide you on the link in the description uh, of this video all the uh, necessary files that you might need in order to, to get this running on your own bet for app account and I'm also going to save all these queries and uh, let you download as well so you can run them and check it by yourselves all right so I hope you like this we will plan to have more uh, live events like this one so if you want you can write to our support team or even comment here on the video what you would like to see on the next uh, live events that we make and that's pretty much it so see you soon and I hope you are uh, subscribed to our channel and uh, it, especially now that we are having a GraphQL new feature here in, in Parts we're letting in lots of different videos every week for you so this is it guys, hope you liked, see you soon, bye bye.